Yo, 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 this is King Erna coming to y'all live and direct. Honorable topic tonight. I want to speak on Johnny Bird tonight. I actually was on Instagram not too long ago. I'm scrolling and I come across a picture. And it's, it's Johnny Bird. I'm like, wow, who who was this? And happened to be one of his children. And um, I'm not going to say that person's name because uh, just for social media purposes, you know how social media is. But Johnny Bird was an honorable dude, man. I met Johnny Bird probably 86, 87, some of that nature. And um, he was a skinny dude. I was a little, little kid, of course. But he was a real, you know, skinny dude. And he had two fingers on one of his hands. Man, I seen this dude at Fern Rock one day get off the buses and whatnot. Warm a guy up by himself, you know. But more than anything, I can remember... This always going on at Ali High School. So you know how young I was in 86, 87. So like 90, right before I went away, 1990, right before I went away, if I'm not mistaken, uh, he pulled up into Ali High School with an all-black bowling ball paint BMW. So you know the shine on that joint was nice. And I walked over to the car, whatever, and I was looking at it, and I kept saying to myself, damn, man. He liked the mother guys who used to live on my block because there was some OGs who used to live on my block up that neighborhood that um, they all had big chains and I thought they was run DMC. Nonetheless, Bird was so much of a live dude that he always treated the people that hustled for him with respect. Like me, I was young and I hustled for Tone Clark at that time. Me, Tone Clark, rest in honor. And um, Bird had everybody that hustled for him. And, you know, we used to always meet up there, walk through Park Avenue, you know, strolling on with their Sergio Tux on or, you know, they brand new sneakers and whatnot. And I slide around there. And that's how we all kind of got connected in reference to Fern Rock and Island. As far as my era, you know, we all was hustling. When things got tight, Tom Clark, he went to another state or whatever. So I remember, I'm like, damn. I'm going to go around and see what's up with Bird. So I knock on his door. You know, everybody knows his door, his house right in the corner because they had the store back in that day because his dad is Johnny Bird. So I knocked on the door. His mom came to the door. She's a very nice lady. She's like, oh, hold on. She came, got him. He came back out. He like, damn, he like, damn what's up, man? What's up, Lil Hodge? You know, I'm like, damn, what's going on, man? He like, what's up? Talk to me. So I told him, I said, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm hit, you know, I need to get back. And he like, what you mean? I'm like, no, you know, he left. He like, oh yeah? Went in the house. At that time, a lot of us wasn't interested in waiting. Cause we used to sell for our old heads. We used to sell bundles and all that. It wasn't until we got older when we understood and we used to get them a lot of money. He came to the door with a G pack and gave it to me. You know what I'm saying? When he gave me the G pack, I was like, all right, what is it? you know, how you wanted to do it, you know, because that offer, back then you'll get a 125 pack and you get back a bean, but I had got up to the point where as though I was getting 150 and giving back a bean, you know what I'm saying, and I keep 50 for myself, so I know that he was still on that, on that number, the 125 Jones or whatever, so I was like, damn, what's up, he was like, no, I'm gonna give you, give you that shows, I'm like, I can have it, nobody ain't never, at that time, it, uh, selling drugs, nobody never gave me a thousand dollars in drugs. So I was like, damn, beautiful, Bob, beautiful. I went to the block, I attacked it, and um, I came this way. And he was like, man, you should wait for Tone when he come back. Ba ba ba. He said, but uh, I could point you in the direction of somebody that sells some weight. Long story short, that kind of put me in the motion of selling weight. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I wound up going away anyway. But Bird was a unique dude because. I can remember us talking before he done one of his bits. And he was like, yeah, boom, I got to go do some time, da 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 And he was talking about it like it was a vacation. So even when I had done juvenile time at that time, but even as an adult, I always remember that strength he had. So I carry it like, man, it, it is what it is, a vacation. I got to get past it. You know, it'll all be over soon. And he went to jail and done it like it was a vacation. Came home saying, smile. But it switched up from, like, caps to bags now. So the game had turned around, and Bird was the type of individual who was trying to find his way. 
And, and let me say this. A lot of people was jealous of Johnny Bird. A lot of people, man. That's how that neighborhood is anyway, man. I mean, to a certain extent, at that time, it was one person keeping the honor intact. And that was, you know, Big W. I ain't even going to say his name. He's a very honorable dude. One of my mentors and a, and a guy who actually showed me in action, not talking, but showed me in action what I supposed to be doing when I got older. When I was young, I asked him about getting high. Like, damn, Big W, you know, you know, getting high, man, sometimes I mess up the money and all that. He was like, yeah, that ain't never really was my thing. You know, my thing was getting money. So when everybody was talking about buying a car and clothes and all that, I was talking about buying a house down the street on the corner. You know what I'm saying? I bought my first house down the street, even pointed me to the crib. His mentorship was good, but... Bird was like one of them dudes that he was a rich porter of the neighborhood. Like him and um, um, Black Star was like rich porters of the neighborhood at that time. They were individuals who actually was bosses. You know what I'm saying? When a lot of dudes was was running around here still smoking coke and all them other things, Jay Bird was a dude who was always getting to it. And, and, and like I said, when he came home, he had that smile, but it changed. It went from... Caps to bags, now everybody was selling bags, 38s by 38, they were so small, and 58s by 58s, or 12 by 12s, you know, the game had changed, and um, I think it was like, he was trying to catch back up, like, um, so he pulled down the street in an all-white Cadillac, i never forget it, that John was see-through, super thorough, he said, listen, man, you know what I mean, I'm looking for Mel, I want y'all to do something for me, that day, show me some love again. The thing is, not even days later, Bird was murdered. You know what I mean? Um, everybody found out about what happened. Nobody never really knew what was the story. But like I said, a lot of people hated on him because he always got to it. But he always held his own. And that white Cadillac is what I remember of him. And he pulled up and I said, damn, that's your nice, man. He said, it's cocaine white, ain't it? I said, yeah. He said, man, I'm back. Windows was clear, see-through. I've never seen a patty with windows so clear. And that night, we all gambled at the top of 13th and Nidro. And Mel kept hitting numbers. I don't know if nobody else, Mel kept hitting numbers. That's how Bird started liking him. And Bird hitting him on his ass. Nigga, get that money, nigga. Get it, get it, get it, get it. You know, we all was having a ball and laughing. He got me by his shirt. This is my youngin. Hit a number one. We we betting five. We betting stacks at a time. Everybody betting, laying. But when he died, I think it was like in the daytime, if I'm not mistaken. And I had seen him get in the car with the dude, you know what I'm saying? So it, it kind of, it, it, it changed up the neighborhood, man. It made the neighborhood go in a whole different direction of live niggas, you know. Tone Clark was another good dude like that in, o, in OG Skins, you know what I mean? Them dudes kind of raised me, man, you know what I'm saying? Big W was the dude that pulled up in the all-black Cliz Aaron and might jump out and get you. Five grand to all the kids. He might see you in the store back shouting at him and look back and say, Who with you, Lil Hodge? And I might say, That person, that person. He might be like, All right, yo, come here. Everybody pay these. Brand new forms. And then with the thing with Big W used to have with me that was honorable, he used to always get me at the top of my grandmother block, man. That's what I'm saying. That neighborhood used to be a live neighborhood. It just, it just switched around. But he used to get. Me at the top of the block and be like, nobody can't beat Lil Hodge on the slap box and tip. And it'd be bets going on. And at the end of the joint, he'd give me all the money. Then pulled up one day and was just like, y'all already right? need some sneakers and all that. And at, the, at that time, we did. Everybody sneakers and BB guns. And even when my man, Big W, was so much of an honorable dude, even when my man... Stepfather had stole his, his turbo hopper. Remember them drums? He stole his dad. That's when crack had first hit. They, they beat him up. Boop, pop, boop, pop. He going up on Park Avenue buying blow with it. They beat him up, man. And I've been talking about these things because it's over 30 years, 28 years ago. You know what I'm saying? So I just wanted to get that special shout out, though, to... um. To, to Bird, man, you know what I'm saying. I want, I, I wanted to show the honor to him. You know what I'm saying. I wanted to get that shot, give a shout out to Boots, Shuggy, all the dudes that was doing something negative at one time, but now got something positive going on. I mean, 
All I can say is this, and I, because I ain't get no confirmation from a lot of different dudes that like really speak on them in this vlog. So I just want to say this: I'm proud of the OGs that taught me a lot of game, and as the game changed, gave me understanding. You yeah, don't do that no more, man. Yeah, I wouldn't do that no more, young. You know what I'm saying it's a different ball game out here. Go positive, get you a job, and that's dudes like Sugar he, and, and, and my other OG man, then. Them guys are men of honor, man, because they point me in a direction to do something positive. You know when dudes are saying do something negative, do this, do that, and Big W, when I talk to them, they point me in a, in a positive way. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure if Skins was here, he would point me in a positive way because even when he wasn't and I was slowing down on stuff, he always would, like, be proud of me and tell me, like, he was, they was like uncles, like, uncles to me. They was more or less the uncles I didn't have because I had like one uncle, Coffee, and he was gang war boy back in the day, but you know, I'm saying far as streets he been was out of there. These guys that was let that that what was, but still are legends in the hood. You know what I'm saying? So, Johnny Bird was an honorable man. My love goes out to his family. Um, my love goes out to all my OGs, especially the ones that changed their lives. My love goes out to uh, my whole old neighborhood, man. The ones that are sturdy, though. The ones that I can say that aren't talking about me behind my back. You know, because that's what happens when you... You got to understand, prophets aren't wanted in their own area. Like, in their own area, prophets, their, their, their community didn't like them. They chased them out. If you look at every God-fearing person... Or, or, or godly man and a prophet, their own. Even a Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the Arabic state was what they wanted him out of there. Speaking about that, because I do so much positivity, it over it, it's not overweighing my negativity. You know, what I mean, they see it. It's like damn, but the people you're around gonna be the people. The people that you was around gonna be the people that's gonna be like, I don't know. I don't believe it, man. I don't know, but. My consistency been long, so it don't matter who don't believe it. It don't matter who don't honor it. It's the fact that the world is honoring it, and it's the fact that the positivity that I'm doing is, 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 is getting recognized. And I don't got to – it's cleaned up so well, I don't got to say rat no more. I can say recycle crime, and a dude going to understand. If I say recycle crime, and this is for my subscribers, recycle crime – a, right, section category A is for the what? The rats, the ones who get enabled by the government to keep doing the negative things in our community. They go in jail, they tell, they or they get down, come out, and continue to do negativity. They are enabled by the government to keep going in the wrong path. But recycle crime section category B is what? That is an individual that I used to be in and out of jail, period, all the time. In and out of jail, in and out of jail, and doing the same crime. It's recycled crime. The only thing is, it's not section category A that is honored and supported, sponsored by the feds. You know what I mean? We give them no assistance. And I just want to um, let everybody know that I'm, I'm, I'm happy today. I'm, I'm proud of myself. And I'm proud of the ones that's around me, the people that love me. Even the people from my old neighborhood, when I see them, that be like, man, I, I'm proud of you. You know, I, I know I got a lot of them that shake my hand, then behind my back say things negative. But I do want everybody to understand, I'm still that guy that you can't disrespect face to face. You know, I mean, I'm not, I'm less angrier. I'm not angry. I'm not trying to kill nobody or harm anybody or stab anybody or beat anybody up because I know they go back to my past and may Allah forgive me for having that physical fight with Steve and him dying. They, a lot of people go back to that and that I don't understand why they go back to that when that was nothing intentional. You know, it was what happened. And I look at the people around and a lot of them people got on the stand on me and guess what? I don't see them and when I ever did, I just nudged them. What blew my mind with that neighborhood was the fact that how many people are deal with individuals that you don't deal with. You see what I'm saying? 
Like, they'll say that they cool with you, but be talking to Slow Joe that you had a problem with last week and be like, oh, all right, I mean, y'all had a real situation, but... But every time me with my friends, when I was coming up and I knew they had a problem, they getting all type of claw calls, so-and-so just got beat up, so-and-so just got stabbed, oh, my God, they shooting at so-and-so because they, but, cause they say I done it. You see what I'm saying? But then them same dudes... They, they don't have that same energy. It's like, damn, appreciate you, bro. You need anything? Damn. So you ain't going to never speak up for me. And that's why I started sticking away and staying away. When I say sticking away, I mean that word. Sticking away. You got to stick to not. Because I remember anybody that's from a hood or a neighborhood, you remember how you just couldn't not be in that neighborhood? I remember coming home from jail, man. And my man Dame, rest in peace. But my grandmother and them came and got me from Pick. From Pick, I went to Kamaga Needle, jump out, and I'm out there to gambling. I'm about to get my hair cut at before and after. I mean, everything, man. And it was like, I always wanted to be able to do that, man. Each bit, it was about me pulling up, jumping out. When you get my age and you pass that type of stuff, when you pull through, you don't even want to jump out and say, what's up? The only thing you want to do is contact those that you know that was from around, from around that way that had honor and love. And when you see them people, you give them that love and that respect. So many people have betrayed me, you know? So many people had tried to kick me when I was down, you hear me? When I was on the run, though, I can say this. When I was in the streets, negative, I can respect it. So when I hear people whisper negative things about me now, and sometimes I know the person that's telling me they want me to go to jail too because that's why they're telling me because everybody knew who I was at the time. So now it just be like funny because it was like, man, these people think I'm stupid. If they, if they never would said it before and now they're saying it now, saying negative stuff, they just want me to pop out and go to jail. They want me to do something to them. They know me for snapping. I'm females. Guys say something to me, uh, um, um, to, to a female about me. A lot of good women, they wouldn't tell me, like, no, nah, I'm not going to say it. All I can say is just stay away from that person. They hate her, blah, 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 blah. They knew I would, you know, do that. But now, freely, they do it, and it's like, I'm waving to y'all from here. I'm waving to y'all from here. Wow, and I don't look down on people, but my majority of them continues to stay in a neighborhood that is that is drowning where it's no, because the honorable people, I can say that the honorable people ain't around no more. But when you find individuals see over and over that they're not, you know, graduating, it's like you're useless. You, I mean, you're standing outside. That's for the youngins, man. Anybody that's my age should not be outside or be in bars and stuff like that. I'm not looking down. I'm just saying, I mean, unless... I can respect your hustle, whatever you're doing. I don't honor it like, you know, do that and continue to do it. I'm not saying that. But, you know, if, you, if you're if earning and that's your buck, okay. But dudes that you see my age are sticking around these kids and trying to be down and trying to be cool, man. And these dudes, ain't, they ain't nothing but bombs, man. And it's sad. And I know a couple dudes. I had a couple real close friends, man, real close friends. One is a major liar. I'm not going to say his name on here. Because I already told that person, he's a major liar. He lies about every and anything. And the other one was an individual who you give, 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 give. And the nigga don't ever, ever show no love back. You take up for him physically when people try to want to rumble him or take stuff from him. And you give him jobs. I didn't get these dudes like job. I didn't get this nigga job. A job that put him on like an urn, paying and stuff like that. And it'd be like a dude that's trying to use you. You know what I'm saying? And the ultimate understanding of the job that I gave was it had understanding behind it. But like I said, man, this, this, this to everybody that's out there doing something positive. If you was like I was at the time and people whisper, say something negative, it's just a form of jealousy. It's just a form of jealousy, man. It's a form of jealousy. A dude got on the phone and said to another dude in the feds, oh, yeah, Ken Gurner said you was a rat. The person knows that they're a rat. The person knows what happened on E-Block when they came through. 
it broke my heart to read the paperwork. And I said it in my vlog, said his whole name and everything. And it was like, ah, uh, and I know he got kids, his family. It's like, ah, uh, but you ain't had no compassion for the person you might have lied on. You might have got somebody, excuse me, not might, you got somebody life or a homicide that they ain't commit. That's dirty, man. But they watching the, you know, the blog so much that they hearing me in regular conversations because actually I would never have mentioned that person's name because even though he's a rat, if I mention him, he's not an example to the children. I mention a lot of the rats that's a, that's stars and, and, and that uh, had movies. When I say they star, star rats, like they got movies out on them and books because the children know them. That's why they got they got the publicity of being known. I don't mention the other dudes because who are they? How can they be an example for the youth? So if you kind of know my system or what I do, you will see it like, oh, okay. It's not really personal. It's not something. If it was personal, I got a list of dudes, right, that I know that's rats that I've told personally to myself, to they face myself. Ask them. Ask them dudes, man. Come on, man. Ask that that that. That uh, trifling mutt Manny, right? Ask him. I've told him, and I don't even know his case or know what was going on with him and his folks, but for him being in the feds with me, and when I say it was in the, when we came home in the halfway house, this guy, Manny, right? He always was trying to be around. He was the old head that everybody you know, looked up to for standing tall. But my OG, the OGs already told me, oh, dude, Fold it back then, man. Come on, man. Dude is a coward, man. And I didn't dig it. But in the halfway house, he clinged to me so much because he saw how much love, honor, and respect the neighborhood had from me. No matter how much negativity I'd done, there were parents, there were mothers, there were people that showed me love when I was in prison. When I didn't have nobody, the people that I stuck up for or came to their children back, they stuck up. They, they showed me love. They showed me honor. And I respect that. But a lot of people just look and be like, well, who's him? And I'm a different guy. That's why you don't know me when you see me nowadays. But that Ray, he kept on coming and, yeah, boy, I'm doing this. I, mean, I saw him when he was with Day Day. When I saw that he was with the boy Day Day and he was like swinging real tight. I was like, this boy funny. He coming funny, man. But I don't even know his case or what he told on, but I know some good people, right, that was there, like there, and he committed to it. Like, yeah, I done it. I told blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. And my thing was this with the rag. What's your whole thing? What happened to your honor, cuz? How you lose your honor that, that fast? What was going on that you took time out just to be a rat. You just, and after all of you, and, and, and youngins, please pay attention to what I'm saying. Please pay attention to me. Majority of the time, it's the guys that's yelling it. You see how I'm not quick to call on rats that I actually know? Would be, anybody know me from the streets? Hands down. Anybody know me from my old neighborhood? Hands down. They're going to tell you. That boy's tell you a rat to, you, to, to your face. I never was an individual who kept quiet about that. You know what I'm saying? But as I got older and mature, it's not a thing that I do no more. I let everybody know before anybody was even letting these guys know they was rats. I was the one walking up to them and telling them, you're a rat. You're a rat. You're a rat. You're a rat. And, it, you know, I didn't get no feedback or whatever because they know I burned them up at them times. But it was old heads like Manny that make you be like... Damn, he know everything about me. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I never was around him. A lot of dudes I know that looked up to him, and I kept telling them years before that people were saying it. I don't know what he told them, but they kept saying, yo, blah, 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 da, da, da. And I'm like, get the freak out of here. They're like, yo, I'm telling you, cuz not cool. So when my man came to me, he said, listen, that guy's a rat. And this was in the can. I was in the fad still. This had to be about... 2008, 2009, something like that. He like, yo, that boy ain't cool, man. I'm like, well, why you say it? He never give me a detail. But this is one of them individuals that would never see nobody, you know, red, blah, blah, blah. And 
when I did see it, it was like, it just confirmed that he was a rat. It was like in paperwork. I didn't even read the paperwork. It was just like, he's a rat. And it blew my mind because you think about guys like Johnny Bird. You think about OGs like Roy and you'd be like, them dudes stood tall. Them dudes are men of iron. And you find out that this sucker was never from my neighborhood. Then he claimed North and North don't even claim him, you know, but he really was from my neighborhood. But he was a fat, chubby guy. He used to go to school and get picked on. You know what I'm saying? So when you find guys like him, too, it's like, man, he the worst kind because he going to act like he, you know, he your friend and offer you drugs probably to sell. He like one of them type of rats. Hey, man, I got some drugs for you to sell. You broke, don't got no money. And you're like, damn, well, maybe I can flip something just this hour real quick. Shit. He going to tell them and record everything just so he can have it in a tuck. When he do something negative, and that's why I'm against recycled crime. But Nick's old heads like him, and we got to honor old heads, you know what I mean? Like Johnny Bird, and we got to respect them, man. And my heart goes out to his family and my love and anybody that need me. Honor Your Life Campaign 720 at gmail.com. I would like to do a documentary on a lot of my OGs that, that's not here no more. We'll see how that take place, man. Maybe uh, one day I can um, slide through again and jump out and have that feeling of, damn, this is unity. Because, like I said, my brother Dane was killed. When he was killed in 96, it hurt me, man. And, you know, and a lot of people paid for that, man. You know what I'm saying? When Dan got killed, you know, one thing about me and Slink, we want no talker guys. You know what I mean? Slink the type of dude, he loved me to death. He'd be home soon. And Slink was like, my go-to man on whatever button I needed to push. And his joint was always this with me. I love you, but you keep giving these suckers a chance. But we, you know, at then we was young. We had a lot of good dudes that was uh, from our neighborhood and that we was running with. And Damon Gilmore was one of them. Damon was super solid. You know what I'm saying? I want to give love out to Miss, Miss Mark, man, because Dame was a unique dude. You know, Dame was a dude, man, who... Uh, we started um, taking money, robbing. We was young, man. And um, we started drinking that syrup and popping them pills, and it kind of took us a little bit over the board, overboard. And like I said, when I got out of jail in 96, my grandmother brought me right to the strip. And Dane was out there, and we was gambling and whatnot. And uh, I can remember shaking his hand and he hugging me, and he like, whoa, ooh, you knocked that time down fast. Ooh, ooh. And... It was like I was just happy to see him that next day he was dead. The caper that killed him. And I can speak about this because it's basically over now. I mean, the dude that killed him, though, he was up hunting it with my cousin, Slink. Everybody know him and how he carried it. You know what I'm saying? This same family, same bloodline. And um, believe it or not, everybody knew that I was a little bit more, uh, you know what I'm saying? But it's just that he was like, rah, rah, rah. You know what I'm saying? And, and with Slink, he didn't, he didn't like the fact that Dan got killed. He didn't like that. You know what I'm saying? So Slink walked with the guy up hunting him for a while and wound him slicing his throat. And um, it didn't work out too well because he didn't, of course, he didn't get it right. And I mean, which is thankful, man, because I don't want to see my cousin in jail for the rest of his life for that. And I'm going to tell you, the dudes that was like his friends... You know, the dudes that were like ran around with him, the only one that sent them something was probably, I think Lil Lowe sent him something, you know what I'm saying? The rest of them dudes ain't sent him nothing, you know what I'm saying? They ain't care. And that was, because he was weird from two different parts of the neighborhood, but we ran together, you know what I mean? Because I honored dudes up that way too, you know? And um, like I said, man, Dame, Dame leaving us was, was, was heavy because it took a lot of the um, unity out of the community away. You know, at this time, Dane would be doing what I need him to do. You know what I mean? That's the type of brother Dane was. He'll be back in the eye of your life. I don't care if he was on negativity. He's going to still back the eye of your life came. That's the type of dude he was. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of good men that's from that area because I love them all. And we got good men. It's just that as the years went on, the legacy has changed. It, it, it went to something different. It's not the same legacy. It's not 
Love, love, love is hate, hate, hate. You can't get nothing better than me. If you get something better than me, I don't like you. And it's just a bunch of whispering. And then I don't like being around or near anything that is getting a lot of reviews of being a rat. You know what I mean? Like people are like, oh, this person a rat, that person a rat, this person a rat, that person a rat, this person a rat. And they start getting so crazy and out of hand that you don't know who was who. You know what I'm saying? Then you start feeling like that some of the people that are saying that people was rats, that maybe they rats. I don't know. So what I started doing years ago is just stop even being around it because I was getting in the middle of stuff that had nothing to do with me. And it was like rats in it involved. And it's like, oh, my honor and tag, these dudes will never peek at me. Why am I conversating or going through it or with, with, with people that have no honor? When you hear my name and their name, it's like... It shouldn't be on the same John. So I just, you know, once I made that transition all the way over, I just said, I, I stopped even swinging through there, man. I rent out the little spot or whatever and um, try to keep my responsibilities intact and do things that I know like my OGs, like Johnny Bird would do. Because Bird was a solid dude, man. And like I said, reach out to me, anybody. Honor Your Life Campaign 720 at gmail.com. And um, be sure to, you know, get with me. Dudes that need their um, resumes, that need their um, applications filled out online on how to do it, I'm the guy. I'll help you. I, I tell you, I got only like a high second before school. I'm, my program is starting. I'm just waiting for all the different budgets that's in the schools to get right. And in the meantime, I'm also going to be putting out a do donation link. The donation link will be here on YouTube, and it also will be on Instagram and anybody that want to donate, help me get brand new cameras, tables, uh, more ping pong tables, already got that, more pool tables, get with me. Because at the end of the day, it's about them not living everything I just was talking about. See, old head bird and what happened to him? What happened was jealousy caught up with him. Jealousy and hatred. And people wanted to do things to him for ages, but they didn't have a heart. And they waited till he went to jail and came up from jail when he in a vulnerable position to do that to him. I'm King Erner from the Honor Your Life campaign. We need to grab our community and make sure, what this say? Honor is the action to loyalty, you see? Honor is the action to loyalty. King Erner live and direct.